Hi everyone, Fresh Haircut here. Today I want to talk about In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Macado. The book is a memoir of the author Carmen Maria, the author of the short stories, her bodies, and the other parties that I've reviewed previously. And just like her previous book, this book is also so well written with much prose-like quality to the writing. I speak into the silence. I toss the stone of my story into a vast crevice, measure the emptiness by its small sum. The writing style is by writing it in chunks of chapters with the theme of dream house. If you've read Han Kang's white book where it is poetry with objects and things with the color of white, egg, flowers, white house, in the dream house is a memoir with the dream house as a motif. We'll go through her life along as we go through her description of the dream house. And she has gone through quite a lot. A violent encounter with a guy during her childhood that is briefly mentioned then a meeting with a pastor that helped her process her pain but the pastor is very very catholic if you know what i mean thank god nothing bad happened because she had to go to college immediately after that but here she met a woman who would the book described as charismatic and volatile which just means manipulative and abusive someone with so much unprocessed anger that instead of working on it she lashes out against the world against anyone and anything near her vicinity, against the cloud in the sky. And as we go through her life with her, we also hear her analyzing media, movies she watches, fairy tales she her, use them as a subtle or sometimes not subtle comparison to description of her experience as her life and mind dissolve into madness from the abuse, as she turns into an abuse victim and her turn into the woman in the dream house. It is so well written that I don't recommend people who have similar experience on reading them. Was it the fact that you've already been tenderized like a war job by never having been properly in love, being told you should be grateful for anything you get as a fat woman, getting weird messages that relationships are about fighting and being at odds with each other, the fact that your heart had been broken that one time and you desperately wanted to feel it unbreak, that you felt complete with someone loving you. The story also are definitely not for those with biblical proportion of narcissism. When listening to someone pouring their heart out when, hmm, how could I make this about me? Then says, huh, if it was me, huh, it would be, huh, different, huh. No shit, deep shit, this isn't about you. You try to tell your story to people who didn't know how to listen. You made a fool of yourself in more ways than one. The writing can be nostalgic as a note to self and as a note to others. A reminder to remember, just because the sharpness of the sadness has faded does not mean that it was not once terrible. It means only that time and space, creatures of infinite girth and tenderness, have stepped down between the two of you and they are keeping you safe as they were once unable to. It could also be tender and sensual like in Dreamhouse as a road trip to Savannah. When you pull into the sparking space outside the hotel, she leans over and kisses you. She kisses your top lip, then the lower one, like each one deserves its own tender attention. She leans away and looks at you with the kind of slow reference consideration you'd give to a painting. She strokes the soft inside of your wrist. You feel your heart beating somewhere far away, as it is behind glass. Then in Dreamhouse as Folktale Taxonomy, she analyzes a few of Hans Anderson folktales with such wit. Sometimes your tongue is removed. Sometimes you steal it of your own accord. Sometimes you live, sometimes you die, sometimes you have a name, sometimes you are named for what, not who you are. The story always looks like a little different, depending on who is telling it. There is a quisa riddle, a quene membra me rompe, whatever names me, breaks me. The solution, of course, is silence. But the truth is, anyone who knows your name can break you in two. There are also moments of rebellious to her past, like in Dreamhouse as all men. She unbuckles her seatbelt and leans very close to your ear. You're not allowed to write about this, she says. Don't you ever write about this. You fucking understand me. You don't know if she means the woman or her, but you not. Fear makes liars of us all. Some are just don't like vulnerable as vulnerable person can be when they write about their experience. You were all mine. Anxiety was your lifeblood, your fuel. You were young. You didn't know your mind could be a boon and a prison boat that someone could take its power and turn it against you. And it can even be a plea, a hope on where she wants her queerness to be in the world, under the same scrutiny and lens used on other people, not special treatment, J. 
just the same treatment. We deserve to have our wrongdoing represented as much as our heroism. Because when we refuse wrongdoing as a possibility for a group of people, we refuse their humanity. That is to say, queers, real life ones, do not deserve representation, protection, and rights because they are morally pure or upright as a people. They deserve those things because they are human beings. And that is enough. And the book is filled with this amazing writing. This is also one of the most open and vulnerable story I've ever read. You know every song is by your favorite musician, whether they're from Adele or Kendrick or Phoebe Bridges or someone else. This is that, but without the music telling you what's the emotion you're supposed to feel, which makes it all the more heartfelt. Well, parts of what the author experience can be difficult to read because it is a horrific experience. But it is not only a book about sharing a horrible experience, but about going past it, about moving forward, that even when the world breaks you to pieces, and then the person who you love will still treat you with love, break those pieces even more. This, maybe, was the worst part. The whole world was out to kill you both. Your bodies has always been abject. You were dropped from the boat of the world, climbed into a piece of driftwood together, and after a prolonged period of pleasure and safety, she tried to drown you. And so you aren't just mad or heartbroken. You grieve from the betrayal. And even after all of that, you can still pick those pieces up and build something new. A better dream house. That's about it.